your once, twice, three times a lady, and I love you. There was a time when I was in a choir, but that was very, very long ago. It's just that when I see these blooms of Lelia purpurata, my heart sings and all I can think of is the fact that finally I have all three of my Lelia purpuratas in bloom at the same time. They came to me as near blooming size and year after year another one came into bloom, another one came into bloom and this year to top the trio off, my Lelia purpurata variety striata, beautiful pink one there, that is a first time bloomer for me and the three musketeers are truly the star of this care collab. Lelia Purpurata care collab, in my case it's an update. Thank you very much Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents for giving me a heads up that this is happening, that I could join in. Sometimes my care collab shows some little pathetic orchids that have never bloomed for me. I haven't figured out their culture so it is so nice and refreshing to be able to join a care collab and say ta-da! Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope that you made it through my first little serenade. But truly, truly, when I see this, I break out in song. I kid you not, here alone on my patio, my head is probably retreating, thinking, no, we can't take much more of this. But for the next two weeks, at least, if not three, the head is going to have to put up with me serenading every once in a while. How can you not? So on the bottom left here, I have Lelia purpurata variety Werkhäuseri. She came to me near blooming size and then the year after that she was in my collection was the first one to bloom. Same with the Lelia purpurata variety Werkhäuseri striata. She arrived at the same time near blooming size and it took two years for her to actually mature into blooming size. Enter year three, here we have Lelia purpurata variety striata, first time bloomer, three blooms. I couldn't be more pleased. Last year, my Weckhäuseri striata gave me two blooms. I've got three this year. Languishing behind a little bit, if you want to call it, that is the Weckhäuseri right here with just two blooms. But my goodness, just two blooms. I say that in quotes because these blooms are for me the queen of blooms. I am not surprised that there are growers that only dedicate their collection to growing these beauties in all the varieties and all the colors that there are out there. I would too if I had more space. Meanwhile, I wouldn't get rid of my collection per se, but I would definitely add five or six more purpuratas into my collection but this space is limited. So I went with colors that speak to me and I was very, very happy to realize that none of them are mislabeled. Personally, I love white blooms. I love it when they're pristine, but when you come with a vintage lavender lip and just as a pop of color as interest, I am all over it. Same here, that's why I went for the Berghäuseri striata variety. You would consider these blooms to be very similar, but the striata is evident in the petals. So there's a little bit more vintage striations here in the petals and you know, I couldn't get enough of this vintage blue. I don't consider them doubles at all. I would think if I had two more like this, that'd be perfectly fine with me. But the classic striata is absolutely a beauty as well. Her blooms are much, much larger than the other two, as the orchid itself is also much larger. And they're standing super proud. There's something about the proportions of Alelia purpurata bloom that speaks to my eye. You've got this fantastic sepal that just reaches for the sky. It makes such a statement to the entire bloom. And then you've got the sepals at the bottom creating a perfect triangle. There is nothing about these blooms that doesn't speak to the proportions and the tidiness of what I like to see. And if you think the beauty of the blooms is knocking your socks off, well, it'll knock your shoes off as well. There is something so divine and delicious about the fragrance. My striata here being a first time bloomer has no fragrance and these blooms are now three weeks old. But my Verkoiseri here, oh, I can stand here a meter away and I've got this fabulous dessert kind of fragrance in my nose of a lemon sherbet is what I call it. But there are hints of cream and sugar. It is so 
delicious. I am also by memory expecting the same to happen for the Berghäuser Istriata. These blooms have only been open three days. So once they age and mature a little bit more, I am hoping that the two of them, which pretty much opened at the same time, that they will sync up and double that fragrance in my blooming alley, which is where the three of them currently live. I have a blooming alley under a south-facing portico, which comes right out of my living room. And that is where I have all my orchids collected that are in bloom, plus some others, of course, hence Blooming Alley. But this is where they are right now. They are in bright, bright shade. Normally, they live on the east side during the summer all the way up to when temperatures get too cold for them in the winter, but on the east side, mainly behind a curtain until the shade comes over onto the east side of the patio. And then I lift the curtain and they have extremely bright shade over there, the curtain being white. I was a little bit concerned over this winter, to be honest with you. I had a horrendous winter and my perparatas had to suffer no light to low light. Those were the margins none at all or very very low light and it was very cold for a very extended period of time and if I use the word very a lot it's because that is what it was. The spring was totally horrendous and I thought well I am going to be forfeiting quite some blooms come the summertime especially perparatas. I was actually seeing my leaves green up, something that I haven't seen since these orchids have been in my collection. And it brought a little bit of, yeah, you know, trepidation in my gut. And I thought, yeah, we're not going to see perparata blooms, but please live. I wanted these orchids to survive the conditions that they had to tolerate earlier on. Not only did they survive, but they threw this at me, at us. And to be in this care collab, to show you this beautiful display, it's an honor and it's a privilege. As they are blooming and at the same time growing roots, right now I am giving them a lot of calcium and magnesium and a lot of seaweed. I do not want a repeat of what happened in the spring of 2022 in 2023. I'm very scared of what could happen and how much of this they can tolerate. If it's a one-off, okay, that's great. But if it were to be a repeat thing, then, you know, we're going to have certain issues with the light levels that I can provide for these orchids in order for them to perform well. So my main focus right now is to pump them full with calcium and magnesium. They have not started on any new growths of the season and they won't after they finish blooming. It'll take quite some time before another eye starts up, which is disappointing because by that time we're heading into August, September and well, <laughs> winter. So calcium, magnesium going in, pumping them full of strength, seaweed to encourage those roots to really get going and branch in that pot so that they have something to work with and sustain themselves with. My Lekka and self-watering setup has worked phenomenally well. And the Purpurata Vecchoiseri here has been repotted in the past, never ever had a problem with her adjusting to the climate in the pot after a repot. She didn't even stop blooming because of a repot. I desperately need to repot the striata and the Verkhäuseri striata. That was the game plan for spring this year as the roots started to grow. I didn't. Normally, I would have gone in after two years of them being in the pot to refresh the root ball and everything. But this spring, even though new roots were growing, I had no end of the horrendous weather in sight. The forecast for four to five weeks was the same thing over and over. Dark, rainy, cold, that I didn't want to stress these orchids out further by taking them out of their pot, even though the roots were growing. There was no light to back up any root growth to continue further after my intervention. Any intervention is a form of stress. Even with the new root growth as backup, if there is no light, I am of the opinion the stress is just going to compound a problem and then probably cause my orchid to collapse. For that reason, my hands are itching to get into the pot of the two that really, really need it. In this case, I really had to hold off and I am seriously hoping that I may get another flush of new roots, which is unusual. New roots normally happen only once a year with these orchids, but considering that we are now in proper temperatures that they haven't had before, it is possible that they may respond with another flush of roots and maybe even a new growth much sooner. So maybe they will adapt to what is changing in my climate and wow, then we are going in and gonna do a full root ball cleanup on these two orchids. 
In between every CalMag application or seaweed application, I flush profusely. Now that the pots are pretty full with roots, it is paramount to keep that oxygen exchange in that pot fresh and not let it get stagnant. So there's a lot, a lot of flushing going on, making sure that I pull oxygen through the pot by way of gravity with the water. These have got to be one of my favorite orchids. I say that with almost every care collab. <laughs> well, the ones that are performing well for me, let's put it that way. <laughs> the struggling ones are the ones where I'm like, it's my favorite orchid and that's why I'm trying to save it kind of thing. But really, I appreciate being part of this care collab. Thank you very, very much. I hope that you enjoyed this update. All the other channels that are participating are in the description. So you want to see the state and the status of other Lelia purpuratas and get more of a fix from these gorgeous orchids, then go ahead, check out the description and see who else is down there with their videos. The fact that you watched my video, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Leave me a comment, say hi, let me know that you're here, any questions you may have, everything into the comments section. Overload it. Let's see if you can fill up that comment section as full as my heart is filled with what I see in the viewfinder. It is just bursting with joy. So looking forward to seeing you down there to have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.